All right, guys, welcome back to Biology 223. We're going to begin Unit 2, going over the muscles, starting off with Lab 4, the axial muscles. Uh, just to give you guys an idea of what the next couple labs are going to look like, you're going to learn all the muscles of the axial <coughs> skeleton this week and the appendicular next week. There's going to be a lot more for next week, so just be prepared for that. Today, we're going to be starting off with the muscles of the skull. You guys are going to hear me say uh, this muscle is on the superficial side versus the deep side quite a bit. This is the superficial side of the skull where you can see some of the connective tissue in this muscle versus the deep side where you can kind of see more of the skull and other things like that. So just be aware of that as I'm referencing this head model for the rest of this video. <clears throat> There's some terminology you guys are going to need to know that you will be quizzed on and will be on your practical such as reflect, origin, insertion, all that stuff. So just make sure you take some time to go over those terms because you will definitely be tested on them. Starting off with the muscles of our facial expression, we have the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis. It's this giant muscle right on top of your frontal bone. And then posteriorly, we have the occipital belly of the occipital frontalis. The epicranial aponeurosis is this giant gray connective tissue sheath on the superficial side of the skull. Also on the superficial side, we have this muscle just above the ear, kind of looks like a fan. That is going to be the temporoparietalis. <clears throat> on the deep side of the skull, we have the corrugator supercilii. That's going to be this little red stripe right here. This is one of the muscles responsible for you being able to raise your eyebrows. So if you like raise your eyebrows kind of silly, it looks super silly. So if that helps you remember it, corrugator super silly. Next up is our orbicularis oculi, this circular muscle going around the eyeball. <clears throat> Next to the procerus and the nasalis are going to be on our nose. For procerus, that's going to be vertical striations. For nasalis, those, that's going to be horizontal striations. So your procerus is just here. It's vertical striations. And your nasalis is closer to the bridge of your nose, those horizontal striations. Next up, we have our two zygomaticus muscles. The zygomaticus minor and the zygomaticus major just below it. We're going to be going over a few minors and majors in the next couple weeks. For the most part, minor is always over major for the exception of the pectoralis muscles. So minor over major. Zygomaticus minor is just superior to the zygomaticus major. Next up, a little more about facial expression. We have the orbicularis oris, this circular muscle going around your lips. The levator labii superioris, just on the side of the lips, just to the side of the nose, these vertical striations. Next up, we have our depressor anguli oris and our depressor labii inferioris. For our depressor anguli oris, it's this muscle that kind of looks like a little triangle pyramid shape. The depressor labii inferioris is just medial to that. It's horizontal striations that end <clears throat> as you're crossing from the superficial to deep side of the skull. The mentalis is these vertical striations going from your mental protuberance up towards your lips. And then your buccinator is going to be on the deep side these horizontal striations right here. This is a really good hallmark muscle. It has an orange dot in it that usually a lot of people use to help indicate that muscle. So this one has a little orange dot in it that you can see right there. The platysma is a very, very small piece of connective tissue that you generally only can see on a picture or a cadaver if it has even been harvested on a cadaver at all. Next up is going to be our muscles of our mastication. Starting off with our temporalis, it's going to be on the deep side of the skull. It's this muscle right here. Be very careful, don't get temporalis confused with temporoparietalis. Temporoparietalis superficial, temporalis deep. Next up is our masseter. It's going to be on the superficial side, just here right in front of this salivary gland. So just anterior to that salivary gland on the superficial side. 
And then our medial and lateral pterygoids, both on the deep side of the skull. Next to medial pterygoid, write vertical striations. Next to lateral pterygoid, write horizontal striations. The lateral pterygoid looks like it's been cut. It's this piece right here. And the medial pterygoid are these vertical striations going up underneath the lateral pterygoid. Hopefully that makes sense because when you're looking at the head from this view, the lateral pterygoid is going to be more lateral than the medial. Next up, we're gonna go over some muscles of the neck, starting off with our, er, our anterior belly of digastric. There's two sort of little slivers of muscle that you can feel right here. That's gonna be your anterior belly of digastric. Just underneath it, we have horizontal striations, kind of a larger sheath of muscle. That's gonna be our mylohyoid. Coming down here beneath our hyoid bone, we have the sternohyoid, which is more medial, and the omohyoid, which is more lateral. Kind of hard to see, but you'll be able to palpate that difference in lab fairly easily. <clears throat> Coming off of our anterior belly of digastric and looking more on the deep side of the skull, we have the stylohyoid and the posterior belly of digastric. The stylohyoid is going to be anterior to the posterior belly of the digastric. So those two are super close together, so make sure you remember stylohyoid is the anterior of those two. Last up for muscles of the neck, sternocleidomastoid, this giant muscle on the superficial side of the skull. All right, and that's gonna complete the muscles for the head model. The muscles of respiration and abdominal muscles, we're gonna have you guys work on your own in lab. Uh, usually those terms are pretty easy for people to figure out on their own, and that gives you some time to go over and go <clears throat> discover some terms for yourself. Now we're gonna talk a little more about the muscles of shoulder movement. And we're gonna be looking at this <laughs> bigger torso model to start off with. We can't see the pectoralis major on this model. It would normally be a giant muscle that's covering all this. It's been cut off, or you can think like reflected. That's one of the terms you guys need to know. So the act of or cutting a muscle and removing it or shifting it so you can see underlying structures or muscles, that's the act of reflection. This muscle right here connected to all the ribs it's going to be our pectoralis minor. Next up, our serratus anterior. It's where all these blue dots are. Looks like little bear claws. Our subclavius is gonna be this muscle up here towards the top. It looks like it's kind of been colored in by a red marker. So this is gonna be your subclavius muscle. <clears throat> For the last couple, we're gonna to move to our back model, this model right here. Starting off with our trapezius, this muscle on either side. If we were to reflect that, we can see some underlying structures, such as the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major. Again, minor over major. So this singular strip right here is gonna be the rhomboid minor. These two underneath it are gonna be the rhomboid major. We have another little sliver of muscle right here, kind of coming up from our scapula. That's going to be our levator scapulae. And last but not least, we have the latissimus dorsi, which is gonna be this muscle down here on the side. Most people know this one, like if you have any gym experience, like that's your lats. Uh, you cannot write lats on your quizzes or practicals, you do have to write latissimus dorsi, just like you cannot write pecs, you would have to write pectoralis major or minor, you can't write just abs, you'd have to write rectus abdominis. All right, <clears throat> good luck with your quizzes and stuff this week, you guys, and I will see you next week for the appendicular muscles.